Today we're going to show you how to install a freeze or frost proof water hydrant for your farm or homestead property. Let's go. So it's vitally important in the dead of winter to have water for your livestock, water for your animals that are living outside on your homestead or farm, and even your greenhouse to water those plants in the middle and dead of winter. So this is really the only way to properly do it. Now these hydrants come in different depths. Depending on where you live, you're gonna need to investigate where your frost line is. Now, when I used to live in Michigan, I believe it was 45 or 48 inches. So you need one that goes down at least four feet below the ground because that's where in the dead of winter, things are gonna freeze down to and you don't want this freezing. Here in Texas, in East Texas, we have a 12 inch frost line. So. I don't, I didn't see a 12 inch at the store, but this is a 24 inch. So I'm going to bury that 24 inches into the ground and we'll have about 27, 28 inches sticking up out of the ground. Time to put this in. We'll show you the proper way to do it. This can also be used in your greenhouses. Now, of course, if you've got a heated greenhouse and you run the line inside the greenhouse, it's not necessary. But if you wanna have the line outside the greenhouse and then run a water line from here, like a hose, into the greenhouse to water in the dead of winter, this is the way to go. Now, a lot of you already know how this works, but just a quick second to explain it. When you lift the handle up, the rod in the center of the pipe comes down and it pulls up the plunger on the bottom. And that's where the valve sits, below the frost line so it does not freeze. So you're saying, well, when you close it back off, there's gonna be water in this pipe. Well, no, because when you close it back off, it drains out this weep hole here at the bottom, leaving no water left in the system, except what is below the ground, below the freeze line. Now, this we're gonna talk about because it's incredibly important, but let's start the install. We've gotta remove our old PVC line to get this thing in. First things first, we're gonna remove all of our irrigation lines for here in the garden, and we need to dig up and find the bottom of that water line. Now that we have our hole dug and our old pipe is cut off, we had some water drain out. You wanna let that uh, soak into the surrounding soil before you do the next step, which is fill the bottom of that hole with gravel. A fairly large aggregate, probably one inch and above. We got some big blocks and we've also got some one inch aggregate that's gonna go around there. That is one of the most important steps in this process. And that is because that weep hole at the bottom of the hydrant needs to drain. It needs to drain all that water out of the top portion, that top pipe, into the surrounding ground below that frost line for things to work properly and to not freeze. Now this weep hole is incredibly important and keeping sediment out of there any debris at all is key in keeping the longevity of this hydrant working. This is where a lot of failures happen, is when this gets clogged up and it messes up the valve inside of here. So we're gonna do everything possible to keep sediment and dirt away from the weep hole. And that includes this next step, which I'm gonna show you now. So this step is important in the process because protecting that weep hole is unbelievably important to the proper operation and longevity of your hydrant. So what we have here is, are two different buckets. Usually a five gallon bucket is used to protect the bottom, but in this case, since we don't have a very low frost line, we've gotta use a smaller bucket for that. So you're gonna to need to determine what size bucket or protection you need to put around the bottom of your hydrant. So we're gonna use this one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a circle out in the top of the bucket to insert or to fit the hydrant um, pipe right here. So you can use any type of tool that you want to make those cuts. We've got a Dremel with a diamond wheel. We've got an X-Acto knife. If you have a thicker five gallon bucket like this, you probably want to use an angle grinder. So 
So of course, when working with brass and PVC, you need these two items right here. We got PVC glue and we've got pipe dope or thread sealant. These are very important when putting all these parts and pieces together. And as always, I will list all the parts and pieces that you need for this project in the description below. We will also include the link to the hydrant in the description below. This hydrant is roughly $55. Now this isn't the famous Woodford, Iowa, but it will do the job if you take care of it. This one was $55. The Woodfords are upwards of 100 and between $150 and $175 I've seen them for. I just don't have that to spend on a hydrant. So if you don't, this is the way to go because if you treat it properly, it will last you. We have our T-post driven into the hole into the ground where our hydrant is gonna go. Now, the next thing is to connect this elbow fitting to the bottom of your hydrant with the pipe sealant or pipe dope and connect this portion, this three quarter inch female slip to the end of the pipe that you've got under the ground. So all we're gonna do is add our thread sealant right there, our pipe dope run it around all the threads get it good and seated in those threads you can put all the excess in the female part in the, these threads in here and connect them together when attaching your pvc fittings make sure that your pipe is clean and dry and you've taken off all the burrs from your cut. Our next step is to place our bucket over the bottom of the hydrant. We're gonna put it through the hole we made at the top. Now, a step that I forgot to tell you about was to cut a notch for your water line. If you have a water line coming in and one going out, if it's in the middle of a line, you obviously need two notches. Cut those notches about halfway up the bucket. So now we're gonna place our hydrant down in the hole and connect our two fittings with that coupling. Once you've got everything tightened up below and you've checked for leaks, you've got your bucket down on the top, pull the gravel around the bucket to hold it. What we're gonna do now is fill in the hole with some more gravel and put on this geotextile fabric over the top so no dirt gets down into the area where that weep hole is. After that, we're gonna cover it back up with our dirt and clay. We're gonna hook back up our irrigation system and we'll be good to go. So that's the process for installing one of these frost or freeze proof hydrants. Now remember, the number one reason these fail is because soil, dirt, gets into that weep hole and then gets into the valve and messes up the seals. So make sure, whatever you do, keep all the dirt and soil away from that weep hole. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Now I want you to go check out this video right here, which shows you how to build a predator resistant outdoor chicken run. Have a great day. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye.